I was hosting the parade coverage yesterday on NFL Network, the, the studio portion. We had our great reporters, James Palmer and Sherry Burris there. Thankfully, they are both safe and healthy, and they are back home. They got out of there. They were right near the gunshots. They hid under the stage, as police told them to, and then got into Union Station, got into the garage, got in their car, and were able to get out safely. Thankfully. Got off the air at noon, and let's just set the stage. So the final minutes of the parade, they're on stage. Travis Kelsey is up there so comically hammered that he could not stand up on his own. He couldn't even read his phone of he the was lyrics. He trying that he wrote. to was read his phone yeah. for friends in low places, and they eventually, like the Oscars, just played him off stage. <laughs> Like, get out of here, buddy. Right? Yeah, Mahomes picked him up on that one. Like, let's get out of here. Okay? Chris Jones had been up there seemingly agreeing to a three-year extension and eschewing free agency. His agent had just tweeted, cut them off with beer mug emojis. Get him off stage. Okay? Everybody is happy. The season's over. Season's over. Party is on. Like, that's at NFL Network. That's like our last thing. Not that we don't do shows every day. Total Access is on again tonight. I'll be hosting, right? But that's like it. Like we wrap. That's it. Great job, everybody. I got off set, took the mic off, walked back to the newsroom, and then all of a sudden we have a giant, much like this monitor behind me here, a giant wall of TVs with all the news channels and sports channels. And we also have all our internal feeds where all the cameras are coming from everywhere. And we have multiple cameras, obviously, at the parade. And all of a sudden, I look up. I go, guys, look, cops with guns drawn, including long guns, running into running into Union Station. And everyone stops and looks up. And you're like, oh, my God. All right, hurry up. Get back on air. And I'll, I'll just fast forward to the part where you know now that people have been shot. You you know now that people are hurt. You know now that one person has died. This is maybe 90 minutes in. And I get a card printed for me. And I'm reading it for the first time on air. And you're holding it. And you read it and you look up and you say that the children's hospital is treating 10, nine of whom are children, eight of whom suffered gunshot wounds. You look down, you make sure you read that right, and you look back up again. Say eight of them have suffered gunshot wounds. Kids who had off from school went to a parade and were shot. Like, how do you, how do you begin to wrap your head around that? I got a text during the parade because we had this wide shot of the massive crowd. And then we zoomed in and and you see all these kids wearing Mahomes jerseys. And listen, I, I'm still a kid inside. We all are like, I want that parade for my team. Okay. Like I didn't get it in 2016 with the guardians. I I have never gotten it for the Browns. Like I I want that parade. I, I will be a little kid no matter how old I am when it happens. But you see all the little kids there. And I said, these kids are going to carry. This is still during the parade. I said on air, these kids are going to carry these memories for the rest of their lives. They are going to tell their kids one day, hey, grandma and grandpa took me down to the parade. And I was there. And Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes got off the float. And signed my jersey or took a selfie with me. I was there and I'm going to show my kids one day. Said that on the air. 
and I got a text from a friend I hadn't, hadn't heard from in a decade, literally a decade. One of those ones where you don't even have a, a text thread above the text because it had been so long and I probably had an Android, like, I mean, so long ago. And it said, hey, Andrew, you don't remember me. Worked years ago at Fox with you. I'm such a huge Chiefs fan. Thank you for saying that because I'm still a little kid watching this. And for years, all I wanted was a parade. And now I get it every year. And I'm still a little kid watching this. Like I get chills just watching this. That is awesome. And then a couple of hours later, those kids are shot. And they're in children's hospital. And their memories are now, I went to a parade and I got shot. Now, there are far bigger conversations and societal issues to talk about, about what happened yesterday. Gang violence, which is what it seems like it was. Accessibility to guns. Public carry laws. The idea that we in this country decide that any dispute we have now has to go to a gun. Look, we could go on and on about this. But just boil it down to this. For me, kids got shot. Like, on what should have been the greatest day, period, for them. Trey Smith, um, this went viral yesterday. Our friend Albert Breer tweeted a story that he had spoken to some people with the Chiefs and pointed out how Trey Smith, among others, the offensive lineman, was so great in trying to calm the kids that were in the Chiefs party he was on good morning america this morning take a listen before i i run in there there's like a little kid in front of me so just grab him just yank him and just tell him you know, you're hopping in here with me buddy so i don't know how many people there were in the closet maybe 20 plus um one of my teammates my long snapper uh james winchester was very instrumental in helping keep people calm we end up getting the green light to be able to get out of there uh, we end up walking um to the buses this little boy uh, was with his father Oh, he's just a little hysterical. He's just panicked. You know, he's scared. He doesn't know what's going on. And, you know, I had the WWE belt um, on the entire parade. And, you know, I was, you know, man, what can I do to help him out? I just handed him the belt. Hey, buddy, you're the champion. No one's going to hurt you. I'm aware. No one's going to hurt you, man. Um, we got your back. We just started talking about wrestling. You know, who's your favorite wrestler? What was your favorite wrestling match? And just little things like that just to take his mind off. Like he was looking out the window and, he was seeing people, you know, just reacting the way they were trying to get out of that situation. So I'm like, here you go, buddy. This is yours. You know, man, like, so again, no one's going to hurt you when you're here with us. Thank you protected, buddy. You're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. Hmm. You know, <laughs> like, imagine going there and then you're running for your lives trying to protect your kids, right? This wasn't like a single gunshot. I mean, 22 people got shot. How many bullets didn't hit somebody? Think about that. Update this morning from Children's Mercy. 11 of those patients, ages 6 to 15. Nine kids shot. Three of them are now um, inpatient of the hospital. All others have been released. So... That is promising. They say all of the kids should should be able to recover physically. Mentally, however, that's another conversation. 23 victims in all. Three people have been detained and are under investigation. Two of those detained are juveniles. So it's not only kids getting shot. It's kids with guns. Those kids, those juveniles can be detained, and all three, up to 24 hours without being charged. Multiple firearms recovered from the scene. Police chief in Kansas City this morning says, quote, this appeared to be a dispute between several people that ended in gunfire. Who the hell brings a machine gun to a parade? Seriously. Who brings a weapon of war to a parade? I'm all for the Second Amendment. 
But if you bring a machine gun to a parade, you never deserve to see the light of day again. Hey, I'm an anxious human being. I'm not afraid of crowds, but I'll be honest, I've been afraid of this stuff for years. For years. I don't get panicky, but like when I'm shoulder to shoulder in a crowd trying to get out, my first thought is, what happens if the you-know-what hits the fan? I don't know that I want to go to parade anytime soon. Do you? Doesn't uh, doesn't seem like I will be, no. No. I don't. And I don't know that I have an answer. Because I live in California with the strictest gun laws in America. This could happen here, too. It could happen anywhere. And it's when do you feel safe? In a movie theater? At a game? I generally feel safe at a game. I do. There's metal detectors. Yep. There's all kinds of layers of security. Yep. Now, <laughs> we've all walked through stadium metal detectors, and I'm like, is that thing really on? You know? But still, like, you know, I don't know anymore, guys. Like, you want to take phone calls on this? I wish I had something deep to say. It's like I'm at a loss for words. It's just, like, it makes me sick. And I don't know that there is an answer because we're not banning guns and I'm not saying we should don't, don't, don't come at me because that's not what I'm saying. You can't ban idiots. You can crack down on organized crime. Hey, since the dawn of time, gangs and organized crime have found a way to get guns, including in societies and countries with the strictest of gun laws. Idiots still get them. I don't know what to do. I would love to shrug my shoulders and say, nothing you can do, move on. It'll, it won't happen again, but it will happen again. And then we're going to sit here like a dog chasing our tail, trying to find an answer.